Hey fam, welcome back. In today's video, I thought it would be fun to do a chatty get ready with me. I know some of you guys were asking for some more personal videos to get to know me a little bit better, and I thought this would be a fun way to do that. I'm gonna be doing the makeup that you see today, as well as talking to you guys a little bit about a lifestyle change I have recently made and how I think it is affecting my life and some great resources that you guys can check out if you're interested as well. I hope that sounds interesting to you guys. If you enjoy chatting Get Ready With Me's, please do not forget to give this video a like. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So I know you guys have been asking for more personal videos, so I thought today we would try a chatty Get Ready With Me, and I would talk to you guys a little bit about how I have changed my diet been doing this for about a month, so I thought it'd be fun to come back and talk with you guys about this. I'm not gonna focus too much on the products or application, just more so on the story, but I will go ahead and let you know what I'm using. So the first product I'm gonna use today is this one by Burt's Bees. This is the Orange Blossom and Pistachio Lip Butter. Y'all, I have been going in on this little baby. I need to get another one very soon. I am almost completely finished. And I just put it on with like a little Q-tip. And I find that this butter-based moisturizer really helps make my lips soft and I think it keeps them a little bit more hydrated than going in with like a regular like chapstick kind of product. I love Burt's lip products in general but this one is just really really nice and I've been using it for a few weeks now to help moisturize my lips and hydrate them because they're always dry. Next, I'm going to go with my Avon Moisturizer. This is the Intensive Redensifying Glycolic Acid Day Moisturizer. This is not my favorite Avon one, but it's one I really like. The one is, that's my favorite has the jojoba oil in it. Y'all may know, unless you're new here, I have been on a weight loss journey for over a year now. I talked about it in my kind of like happy 2020 New Year video, <laughs> which we all know how that turned out. Um, but... I had been working on trying to lose weight. I had put on some weight just in general and then I had herniated my back, which caused even more weight gain. So I was pretty frustrated and, you know, wanting to make some changes, which I had started to do. And then in my last try to get ready with me, I talked to you guys about intermittent fasting, which, you know, was somewhat effective for me. I did it since July, pretty much. I still kind of, not really, but I still fast some nights but for the most part i saw a really nice improvement i saw about 10 pounds come off but then i felt like i was just gaining the weight back even while i was still fasting i just think i wasn't getting the right foods i was really busy so when i was getting the time to eat i was going for like high calorie very like energy dense foods um because i was only eating like once or twice a day and I just was really busy. I was picking my fasting time during working hours. So y'all know how it is with work. Like you get five minutes you think you can spare then something else comes up. So basically I was just finding myself not eating enough, not eating the right food, eating very high calorie meals when I did have time to eat. And it just, I saw the weight coming back. I saw the fasting not really working as well anymore, probably because I just wasn't doing it correctly. Um, no shade. I know there's been a lot of documentation done and studies done around intermittent fasting that have shown it's an effective um, tool to use if it works for you, if it aligns with the way that you want to manage your meals and such. But for me, I just found that it wasn't, wasn't doing the most. I felt a little discouraged. I really want to see a pretty dramatic improvement by the summertime. Grabbing some Farsali liquid glass. It's like a serum hydrating type of product so anyway i've been doing that like i said the intermittent fasting i still work out with my trainer once a week we do heavy lifting and then i've been walking you know three to five days a week with doug uh or just around our neighborhood for about 25 minutes that's about a mile that we'll walk on lunch and uh, it takes like i said like 20 22 minutes something like that and that's what I was doing. And obviously with the change in weather, it's been a lot more exciting to get outside more, which I have been trying to do, uh, which is why I've had a little less content. It's been really great. Uh, I've been trying to get at least one video up a week uh, when I can. I've, I've taken a step back from being so intense with myself with trying to get up, you know, three videos a week while working full time. There's plenty of full time YouTubers who can't even get three videos up a week. And I was trying to do that on top of like a 50 hour work week. And it just was getting to be too much. I was dreading filming and now 
I feel excited about filming again and I've been really enjoying it. So I think that was definitely a good call. So with some of my downtime, I've been trying to get outside more, trying to exercise more. I made it back to my gym going in with the all nighter. Actually, yeah, no wait, before I do the all nighter, I'm gonna go in with this Iconic Beauty blur stick. It's similar to like the Milk Makeup blur stick. I find this really nice just to kind of fill in some of my pores, especially around like my nose, forehead, all that kind of stuff. So I just go in with a little brush. Anyway, so I've been enjoying the outdoors a lot more. I've been enjoying the sunshine, fresh air. It's gotten to be, some days we're still getting, you know, days in the low 50s or maybe the high 40s. And we're getting some days that are like in the low 60s. So that's been really nice. So on those nice days, it's so great to get outside. I also found a park really close to my house that um, has a really pretty lake. I had tried to shoot a vlog. <laughs> I made some meals and did a little outdoor thing and I don't know. I think I just need to practice vlogging more because I don't I don't know how watchable that video is. I just I don't know. I kinda I kinda think I just want to practice more with making vlogs before I put one up. But regardless, you know, I also found another park by my house where there's some flat land where it's great to run. Because right around me there's so many hills, it makes it really hard to work on my endurance and getting, you know, getting better at running again. So anyway. Back to kind of like nutrition and food. So I kind of found this path sort of by accident and it's a path I never thought I would go down before. Like it never was something that really appealed to me or that I thought would really align with my tastes or preferences, which is like so surprising to me, which is why I thought it would be really fun to talk about this with you guys in a video because it really surprised me as well. Then for my last step for my primer, I'm gonna go with the Urban Decay All Nighter Face Primer. This is just a little bit more of a tacky one. I'm still kind of testing this out. I like it so far. I don't think it's as gripping as like my Sweet Little Elf Jelly Pop Primer that I adore, but uh, I like this one, it's nice. So basically, I came across a video by a beauty YouTuber. I'm not sure who she is. It was the first video I ever saw by her. I didn't subscribe, I probably should have, but I was really intrigued. She was talking about starting a juice cleanse. And she said she had watched this video. I thought she said it was on Netflix, but here it was on YouTube. And it was called Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead. So I thought she said Netflix. So I went looking in Netflix um, for like nutrition or health videos. And there's only one that I could find. And it was called What the Health. So this video really shocked me. I really wasn't even sure what to make of it. Um, okay, so this is my, my skin prep basically done. Um, now I wanna move on to eyebrows. And because I'm trying to use up a couple products, I'm just gonna go with this, um, I think this is Billion Dollar Brow, just their little brow pencil. And I've been just kind of doing a very lazy brow with this thing just to try to use this product up. And that's what we're gonna do today. So anyway, this video on Netflix was called What the Health. And I was like, all right, well, this is like a, you know, a health video. I've been meaning to watch a lot of documentaries over the years, um, there was that whole like super size me and stuff. I've never watched any of them, even though I've like wanted to. So this was like the first, I think like nutrition documentary I really watched. And this one was about essentially going plant-based, which I had never really thought about. I've always thought like I could maybe become a pescatarian um, because I love fish so much. But then I was like, well, I don't know if I could give up steak. I knew I didn't want to give up milk. I love milk fat. I love cream and butter and cheese and ice cream and cheesecake and anything with milk fat, I'm such a fan. So I was like, oh, I could never do that. And I didn't think I could ever give up fish. I love fish. And so I was like, you know, I, I could probably give up, you know, chicken and turkey and pork, except for not bacon. So like, again, I always thought like, there's no way I could do this. But I watched this video and I was really astounded, especially when they talked about some of the sponsors of um, the American Heart Association, the American Cancer Society. Uh, I think there was one about like the American Diabetes Foundation or something like that, or my American Diabetic Foundation. He talked about all these different foundations and about looking on their website and the nutrition that they recommended. He's like, it's funny that the American Cancer Society is out here recommending known carcinogens, you know, food that are foods that are no, known carcinogens. Like, um, I think they mentioned like lunch meat and bacon and stuff. And I guess the way it's prepared, it, it's got some sort of like 
properties that make it some kind of a carcinogen. It's a, a product that could cause cancer or that I guess in great volumes could lead to cancer. Um, and I'm not a medical professional. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not anybody. I'm just a girl that was interested in finding out more about nutrition. So I was a little skeptical when I watched this video. I'm like, this all seems a little crazy. This goes against everything I've ever learned about, you know, you've got to make sure you get protein, which for me, I know for, you know, some people might have completely different palates, different appetites, different nutritional needs than me. But for me, I've always struggled to get enough protein. I just, I don't really love protein that much. I was never really like a big, you know, chicken breast person. Like I've always loved carbs and I've always been taught that carbs were like what would lead to weight gain. And this is not necessarily correct or incorrect because it really does depend on the type of carbs that you're eating. Quick interruption, editing Joy here. I wanted to talk a little bit more about this concept of carbohydrates because I kind of started to talk about it and then I just sort of went off on a different tangent. So with carbohydrates, something else that I learned through kind of like looking at all this different health stuff, even during my intermittent fasting time, it was basically that um, it's not so much carbohydrates that are the issue as it is sugar. So basically products that contain a lot of sugar that are also carbohydrates are going to encourage your insulin levels to spike. Insulin is a hormone in our body that helps us to metabolize sugar in our bloodstream. And insulin is known as our storing hormone. So essentially when insulin levels spike, it tells our body, hey, store these calories, you know, store this as energy, store this as fat. And when we're trying to lose weight, storing more food isn't always our objective. Our objective is to burn fat, you know, all that good stuff. So definitely some carbohydrates if you're eating like pop tarts or cakes candies things like that those types of things yes they can be carbs that do cause weight gain but the carbohydrates and such found in vegetables and fruits and um, whole grains nuts beans things like that are not so much the kinds of carbohydrates that we should be avoiding even if you're not on a plant-based diet so i just wanted to clarify that not every carbohydrate is bad and that you can get protein from things other than meat. That's kind of what I was getting at, was just kind of talking about the hormonal aspect of things with carbohydrates and the insulin response they can trigger in our body. Two other things that I noticed on this little nutrition exploration thing is that stress itself can also lead to weight gain. So it's not all about what we eat and how much we exercise, but also how we treat our body um, in terms of how we manage stress and also, like I said, our sugar intake. And another thing that can really contribute to weight gain is lack of sleep, which is something I was also dealing with. And um, so I'm trying to get a little bit better night's sleep. You can hear me, I'm like first thing in the morning before work editing. So um, I just wanted to kind of quickly jump in and add that extra information so I didn't kind of leave that thought sort of hanging. So anyway, let's get back to the video. So basically, you know, I always was told these like high protein, low carb diets. I felt like that was what had worked for me in the past. That's what I lost weight on before. Like I talked about in my previous get ready with me. And I was just really astounded to hear this person say like, no carbs aren't, you know, bad. It's, you know, animal products. And again, I was, I was a little skeptical cause I'm not the most gullible person in the entire world. I definitely, I think kind of look at everything with a little bit of skepticism. Um, you know, just, I don't believe everything I hear type situation. So, um, you know, I just, I kind of filed it away. I told Doug about this video and I was like, again, that's Netflix, what the health. And I was like, wow, this really brought up a bunch of really interesting and kind of scary ideas. Like I really never knew what we were talking about, kind of the American Heart Association, all this stuff like that. Their sponsors are like, pork, beef, milk, like they end up recommending these things because they're getting money from these industries essentially. And I found that very eye opening. I really didn't know that. I didn't know that that was something that really was like, I just thought like I kind of knew what nutrition was and I thought I knew what was considered good for me. And I'd never heard such stuff about like animal products before being like unhealthy. And they were talking about how 
you'll never find or that it gets illegal for these brands to use things like healthy or nutritious or whatever they have to say like the incredible edible egg not like the nutritious egg or you know beef it's what's for dinner they can't say beef you know a healthy choice or something and i was like whoa like is this just like weird conspiracy theory stuff like what is what's going on here so i wanted to give it a little bit more thought okay next i'm going to use a little bit of eye primer because i want to go to eyes next i'm almost finished this product this is just a little sample of the urban decay um eyeshadow primer potion in the original shade I was like, I definitely need to look into this a little bit more. You know, this is bringing up some interesting um, topics of conversation, but you know, is this just an agenda? Is this a person with an agenda? And what the girl that I had originally been watching in the YouTube video that kind of made me want to go and look at this stuff was she was talking about that movie, like I mentioned, um, Fat, Sick, Nearly Dead, which is actually a YouTube video you can watch. It'll have ads in it, but it's free to watch with ads which is fine because, you know, a lot of content on YouTube has ads. So, um, you know, I hadn't gotten to that video yet, but I was like, wow, this is really interesting. So then I was randomly watching a video by Jamie French and she talked about this gallbladder cleanse. Now, I was a little nervous because I'm, I'm not the most like blood and guts kind of person. I, I'm really not like a big fan of like a lot of gross things. I wasn't sure. So I was like, I hope this video is not too intense for me <laughs> in that department. But I was, I was really curious what this gallbladder cleanse was. And I will link Jamie's video down below. I'll try to link everything I can find that's on YouTube down below. Um, a lot of information for you guys on all this stuff. Okay. So for eyes, I want to play with my Menagerie Feral palette. This is what this palette looks like. And I want to play with this one also with my Flower Jungle Lights palette. And you all might be saying, hey, I didn't see y'all pull that in your shop my sash. I didn't. <laughs> I pulled it after the fact. I pulled this and I also pulled in this blush palette from OPV Beauty, the Born to Shine blush palette, which has a lot of really pretty powder blushes in it. I grabbed these two after I did the video just because I decided I wanted to incorporate them as well. So I think I'm going to start with the Feral palette. So I think I'm going to start with Alpha, this shade here, and let me pull you guys in. Okay, so if you guys zoomed in, I'm going to start with this shade, which is Alpha. I'm going to try that on the outer corner. Okay, so where were we? Okay, so we were talking about Jamie French. So basically, she was talking about this gallbladder cleanse she was doing, and... I was intrigued and the reason I was intrigued is because my mom has actually had gallbladder surgery and this was a couple years ago I believe she's had her gallbladder removed and because I'm a lot like my mom obviously like family history you start thinking like oh gosh like what my mom went through could be potentially the same kind of things I should be watching for because we have that similar you know I take after her so much so I was curious about this gallbladder cleanse that Jamie French was talking about. And in her video, she talked about how she's had her appendix out and she also had to have her thyroid removed. And she said after losing basically two body parts when she was having issues with her gallbladder and the takeaway was that she would have to have it removed. She's like, before I lost a third body part because she's had so many complications from the first two, she really wanted to look into alternate methods. And she talked about how she'd spoken to, I think a few doctors or different specialists and some of them were for it. And some of them were like, no, this is a waste of your time. Um, you know, you, sh you really shouldn't do this type of thing. And others were very supportive. Like, hey, if you can avoid surgery by doing this, obviously do that. So she decided to give it a try. She bought this book and it had specific instructions. And the first thing she basically had to do with getting, with prepping was to switch to a plant-based meal plan. So I'm like, okay, I just finished watching this movie, the What the Health movie about plant-based diets and about how it's like the best thing you can do for your health. And now I'm seeing that this gallbladder cleanse is involving switching to plant-based. So that was like, that was like my second indicator where I'm like, okay, maybe there's something to this plant-based situation and, you know, greater health. And I like vegetables, but I don't think I get enough of them by any means. So, um, I definitely was interested in 
you know, exp possibly exploring this. So she had to go through like a whole colonics thing and, you know, stick with the plant base, do this specific, um, she had to put together like, I think it was like apple cider vinegar and a couple other things and go through this whole process, get colonics and everything. But she ended up shedding a bunch of stones out of her liver and her gallbladder. And because our livers are basically like our body's filtration system, I imagine that they probably take a beating, especially when we're eating a bunch of junk food. Like I was eating a bunch of junk food, like the junk food queen over here. Okay, so next I'm gonna grab on this denser brush, I'm gonna grab the shade right next to it, which is uh, Canis Lupus, this like beigey shade, and just try to blend this out a bit. So basically, I followed her journey with, with all of that. She saw a lot of success. She was able to avoid the surgery and she was feeling a lot better than she was feeling. She was having really bad stomach pains and stuff before. And I, I had actually gone to the hospital in my early twenties um, and they thought that I had gallstones possibly. Now it ended up not being that, but you know, obviously it's, I've got the family history, so it, it definitely concerned me. And I was very interested in, you know, learning more about this whole plant-based situation. So then I ended up watching the Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead movie on YouTube that, that, that I had first kind of been interested in seeing based on this girl's recommendation. And she had mentioned, you know, she was going to start juicing. I talked to my trainer, Brian, about it, and he said that juicing, it might not be the most sustainable thing, but I was interested in maybe like supplementing my diet with juicing. So I watched that video as well. And in that video, there was this guy who was like super duper sick. Like he lived in Australia and was basically on a whole bunch of different prescription medication and was looking for, you know, solutions. He didn't want to be shackled to all these prescriptions. And, you know, he was, I think, believe he was diabetic or pre-diabetic and was just really going through it. And, um, you know, he, he was a very successful business person and this was an area where he was really struggling. So, he basically took, I think it was like six months or something or four months and came to the US and basically traveled across our entire country, um, meeting different people and spreading his message of juicing. And something that's kind of cool about juicing is that I guess there are studies or theories that when we cook our vegetables and such that some of the nutrients can be lost in that heating process but that by eating things raw, you're really getting them in their natural state with all of their intended nutrient benefits. I can deal with some raw vegetables, but like I'm not a huge like raw vegetable person. I definitely prefer my vegetables cooked. I figured juicing would be a great alternative to help me get more raw vegetables um, and fruits and such into my body in their raw state, in their most nutrient dense form, be able to get more nutrients than you would if you were eating everything because of all the fiber. And fiber can be great, but it also is very filling and obviously your system has to, you know, work to break fiber down or, um, you know, it, it can cause some, some tummy pain or tummy issues. So juicing actually allows you to get a lot more nutrients, but not as much fiber. And it's helped me oftentimes I would buy fresh fruits and vegetables and I'd end up throwing them out because I just couldn't get to everything in enough time with, but with juicing, I feel like I'm able to get through more things, um, than just, you know, to have things go bad in my refrigerator and end up getting tossed. So I don't love this look so far. I don't know what I was hoping to accomplish, but we'll just keep going. Okay. I'm just going to go back in with the darker shade and just build that up a little bit again. We're just going to hope for the best today, but between Jamie's video and then watching this guy lose all this weight from juicing. Um, and I think he was also allowed to have like beans and grains for these six months, which is basically a vegan diet. He lost so much weight. He was able to go off a lot of his prescriptions. Other people he talked to that decided they would try this with him also had a lot of success. And it was just very, very, interesting. I'd never really considered a vegan diet before. And that's not to say that, you know, being vegan only has to do with diet. It also has to do with, you know, the clothes you wear, the makeup you wear, the products you buy, all that kind of stuff. So to me, a person who adopts a vegan lifestyle is somebody that I really 
commend because it's hard, though less hard than I thought it would be, but it really does take commitment to inconvenience yourself to find products that don't involve animals, that don't involve any kind of like harm to animals or the use of animals. And I really just commend people for that. It takes a lot. I've basically only been focusing on food for the time being, but I do think it's something to aspire to, to potentially someday also look more into like the other products I use and whether or not they involve animal products. So I decided that I was gonna give this a try. Just dipped into the dark matte green. Again, I have no idea where I'm going with this look, but we're just gonna give it our all today and hope for the best. So basically, I decided I was gonna give it a try and I didn't know where to start. I had no idea how to cook vegan food. I had no idea how to use some of the, um, I guess like variations for things, like you know, there are substitutions for butter, for cheese, for milk, for eggs, for all different kinds of stuff. And I really didn't know where to start and I have to give it to Sweet Potato Soul who is like one of my new favorite creators. She is a vegan chef. She grew up eating soul food and decided to adopt a vegan lifestyle. I think it was like seven years ago now. And she has found ways to take her grandmother's recipes that she grew up loving and convert them into vegan recipes. And I made her cauliflower fried chicken, which was amazing. Her spice profiles and flavor profiles are so delicious. And she points out that, you know, with animal products, with like meats and stuff, we always season them. We always add like, you know, either like herbs, spices, um, or even vegetables to our meats to make them more palatable. Where with a vegetable or a fruit, we don't have to do that. We basically can just eat them just as they are. So, and I also watched on um, the What the Health video, they talked about our jaw and how I think like true omnivores like dogs or bears have a jaw that just goes, it's just like clamps, like boop, 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 where ours rotates like that, like more like a plant eater and how we were intended to be more plant eaters than what Western our Western diet has become. So all of this was just kind of interesting and I decided to kind of treat it like a science experiment and see what would happen if I switched to a plant-based diet. And let me just tell you, I had so many unexpected um, results from changing my eating and changing the, not even my eating, like I'm, I'm not counting calories, I'm not worrying about anything. Um, I even just had ice cream last night, but it was oat milk ice cream. But just taking everything, this is so much fallout, taking a more plant-based approach, I wanted to see how it would in fact impact my body and what I could learn from eating a more plant-based vegan diet. Okay, this look is getting weirder by the minute, but we're gonna keep going. I'm going to go back with this little packing brush and I'm gonna dip into this lighter green. I just wanna kind of blend this darker green with the lighter green. So I started about four weeks ago on this new eating plan. And the first thing I noticed was my mood, which I did not expect. My mood, since I have switched to eating vegetables and fruits and grains and not animal products, I even gave up coffee, which I did not think was humanly possible. I haven't had coffee in a month. I thought I would have horrible headaches from giving up caffeine because I drank so much caffeine in a day. I was like, this is gonna be so hard. It was not like hard at all. Um, my mood has significantly improved where I feel like I'm not having nearly as much anxiety as I was having. I don't know exactly why bad food was causing me anxiety, but I will say that I also was watching more stuff on YouTube. It was, I think it's called like Fat to Fit, which is a show I think that was originally, maybe originally on a different channel, but I think Lifetime picked it up or something. Some of the episodes I saw were Lifetime episodes. I don't watch Lifetime, but um, you know, I guess in looking through, looking through all these like different nutrition videos and looking at different vegan recipes, it was recommended to me. And, um, even on that show, these basically what happens is a trainer ends up gaining weight 
to then lose weight with their client, to gain a better understanding of what their client is experiencing, um, to understand what it is to do certain exercises at a higher weight where, you know, it's maybe the, the idea before was that these clients were just being lazy or, you know, they just didn't want to work hard to understand better the physical aspect of having extra weight when you're trying to work out and lose it. I think that was the general goal of this experiment with these trainers and their clients. And a lot of the trainers ate a very clean diet before. And when they switched to eating all the junk food, they're like, it feels like one big cheat meal. This is great. And, you know, maybe for the first like 10, 15 pounds they gained, because a lot of them were trying to gain like 45 to 60 pounds in like four months. The, the weight they would initially try to gain, they were like, this is fun. This is great. I don't even know if I want to go back to my strict diet or whatever. But by like the last, say like they're like up to 30 pounds or 40 pounds or 50 or 60 pounds, the depression, all of them, like basically were just laying on the couch. They all felt like crap. Their stomach was a mess and just their general disposition was a mess. Some of them ended up breaking up with their, their, um, girlfriend or ended up having issues within their marriage as a result of the experiment. Temporary, thankfully, but it was just like a bad attitude. These guys were getting from all the crappy food they were eating and feeling not great about you know their physique or whatever and i mean girls too like it it seemed like it was indiscriminate that when these folks switched over to kind of like um a, a bad diet that they ultimately were dealing with a lot of feelings of depression anxiety um especially social anxiety not wanting to be seen not wanting to go out very reclusive and that's kind of how i was feeling i was feeling incredibly anxious for like a hot minute and um you know depressed and stressed and all these things and i've talked to you guys pretty openly about all that stuff just kind of going through it sometimes and i think we all do with work and life that sometimes things just get overwhelming or you know can cause us stress and anxiety that you know can really take a toll on our lives and on our productivity and everything y'all i'm not loving this look at all but this is the first time I've ever played with this palette, so I'm really hoping I can kind of save it. I definitely didn't plan on going so green. <laughs> this is kind of just the way things are shaping up. So now I'm going to grab my little NYX. Uh, this is a glitter primer, and I want to use this on my lid so that I can get some of these shimmers to adhere, hopefully a little better. And then we will clean up the under eye, which has a ton of fallout. And we'll move on to face eventually. So anyway, I was like, look at all these correlations. We've got this gallbladder situation. We've got mood folks, you know, having their mood impacted by their diet. And I was definitely dealing with so much of that, so much anxiety and just not being comfortable and not feeling my most creative. And I was seeing such a difference with eating more plant-based which was really shocking. I just kind of was like hoping to lose some weight and I didn't know that it would really help me like mental health wise as well. So that was a happy learning opportunity. I also learned that I don't miss the things I thought I would miss. I was very frustrated at first, especially with the lack of options, at least in my area. I think if I was like maybe in a big city, like if I didn't live in the suburbs, that maybe there would be more vegan options. Though I did learn about one that is in a town not too far from me. So, you know, I want to explore a little bit more. I found a few things around me, but I'm starting to like learn more about what I can order from restaurants because that was a hard part for sure in the beginning, just feeling very frustrated that I didn't know what I could eat and there wasn't a ton of options. Grab my little Jungle Lights palette and I want to grab, I think this shade here, this like light icy, champagne -y color. I'll try a little bit of that on the front of the lid. But like I found, uh, I go to, I love like the veggie fajitas. It's like a black bean and veggie fajita at Chili's. I've been enjoying that. Um, another one I like is Red Robin has a great veggie burger. I put it in the lettuce wrap and I just like, we'll say like no aioli, no cheese. If they have cheese on something, you can make things plant-based, even if they're not originally plant-based. A lot of Restaurants will make modifications. Um, you know, I'll order a salad, like a, a salad that's all like a tropical salad that maybe comes with shrimp and I'll just say no shrimp. 
And it's been a lot easier than I thought it would be, which has been a huge relief. I also, without counting calories, without feeling hungry, I've lost about seven pounds in a month switching over to more plant-based and the recipes have been really fun they've been fun and interesting i haven't felt like it was like too much of a struggle that is really pretty wow it turned out way better than i thought it was going to we probably didn't need those first two colors i laid down but i just want kind of wanted to map out the eye look a little bit better i haven't tried to bake anything vegan yet that'll be like i think something that will be a bit of a challenge but like yeah the other day I made I had like a whole bunch of mushrooms and that's the other thing I love about a lot of these creators and I will link some of my favorite vegan YouTube content creators down below I have like a few channels that I really feel like if I didn't have them I would have felt so lost like I feel super grateful to these channels just for like trying out even like trying out different cheese alternatives so that you're not out there wasting your money going through a million different brands. Like I think they try to whole bunch. They go to different, like this one family that I watch. They'll do a lot of like Walmart hauls, which I don't food shop at Walmart, but I think vegan stuff can be really expensive. So having options at Walmart is something I might explore because they're a little bit more affordable. I typically just go to my regular grocery store and I'll find a lot of great things in the organic aisle. Um, and I also order a lot from Imperfect Foods, which is a program I learned about from my girl, Lola Geek. I will also link her below. And I learned about Imperfect Foods from her. And basically what it is, is it's a program, like apparently in food stores, they have to, like products have to meet a certain aesthetic standard. Things aren't all the same size. They, they have to meet a certain, um, they have to meet like certain criteria for like size and like the prettiness of like the, the flesh, like if there's bumps or bruises or something on it, like it's all this food gets wasted. So basically you can get like, fresh produce that's a little bit less expensive and you're also doing good things for the environment because you're helping cut down on the things that they wouldn't normally be able to sell in like a regular grocery store because it's a funny shape or it's a little bit small or something like that so I think it's great to like reduce waste and to save some money because I feel like and this is not just this is not like an original thought by any stretch of the imagination I've heard so many times like how much cheaper it is to buy the crappy food and how health food is like so much more expensive and it's 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 just more of this like you know the now we're looking at health as a means of privilege which is is terrible you know everybody should have access to healthy food and nutritious food and and have the ability to have a nutritious diet and um I love that Imperfect Foods allows things to be a little bit more affordable. They deliver every week. You can skip whatever weeks you want to skip. I typically don't skip very many weeks because we always need stuff. And like even with Doug, like he's noticed he's got some sensitivity to dairy. So he switched over to almond milk a while back. And I always get his almond milk on at Imperfect Foods. It's the same stuff they have in the grocery store. Not everything is like imperfect by any means. They also include a lot of just regular products. But it's nice to have them delivered. It's nice that they just show up, you know, without me having to run out and find time, you know, after work or something to get the things I need. I like that I have kind of like a little bit of help during the week to, if we're running out of stuff, you know, we know that there's another delivery coming. So I think it can just be really helpful. I definitely recommend it. I will see if I can link that below as well. And I know my sister even started doing Imperfect Foods and she really likes it. So I think it could be a really great option if you're interested and uh, if you enjoy helping cut down on food waste. I think it can be a great way to contribute to that. Okay, so I think we're good. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna reach into one more shade. I'm gonna reach into the gold from the um, Jungle Lights. We've been using this like lighter color. I just wanna grab a little bit of the gold to kind of blend between this more champagne shade and the green. And I'm just gonna pop that right between, just like a real little light blend between those two colors. I think that's really beautiful. This is such a gorgeous palette. Okay, so I think the eyes are pretty good. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna do for my upper lid, I'm gonna grab this little skinny butt brush and I'm gonna tap into this lighter green shade in Fenris 
And I just want to kind of outline the top of my eye look. So just kind of carving this. Just to add a little bit more definition. As I said, I've lost like seven pounds, six, seven pounds, something like that so far. It's given me a lot more energy, which I did not expect. I do take a multivitamin every day, like a little gummy, and I also take a B12 supplement because apparently B12 comes from animal products. That is good for someone on a plant-based diet to supplement. So I do that each day but I am not hungry, which is great. I feel like I've been hungry for decades now. <laughs> you know, if you're trying to ever lose weight, it's always like cut calories, you know, cut down on this, cut down on that. I don't feel like I have to cut down on anything as long as I'm just sticking to things that are vegan. And um, I don't, I mean, obviously if you sat there and ate a bag of potato chips, that could be vegan too. And you'll not, you know, be maybe eating the healthiest things, but um, you know, I do enjoy some prepared foods. Like I get these little like Fig Newton like things. Um, I get little like candies and obviously like some like chips and stuff because I like salty snacks. I don't eat them every day, but it's nice to have them. But for the most part, like, I mean, I'll do an entire giant like cookie sheet of roasted Brussels sprouts or like I made a mushroom casserole. I had ordered like a bunch of different kinds of mushrooms and I don't I'm not like a huge mushroom person but like this is now my new kind of like meat substitute so I made like a mushroom casserole with like a I didn't have walnuts but I had or not walnuts I didn't have cashews but I had um pecans so I did it I did a like cream sauce with the pecans instead of um cashews and that's nice too you can always like supplement I didn't have leeks so I used an onion things like that and I love that I have a little bit more flexibility and like it's kind of just like getting your pantry to like a good place so that you have like the random things you might need like nutritional yeast and then you can pretty much just make whatever you want to make so using a little bit of micellar water on my little shiseido cotton thingamabobbers i'm just going to clean up my eye look a little bit i really thought this was going to be hard i thought it was going to be this huge adjustment and it really has not been it has been incredibly easy and effective and I just couldn't believe, like the biggest thing to me, like is the health part. I mean, if I can lose some weight, fantastic. But if I can avoid gallbladder surgery, you know, years down the line, hopefully if I can get my gallbladder right, if I can help, you know, my digestive system work better, you know, that's where our immune system lives. And in a time that we need our immune system more than ever, obviously that's a concern. I just think that there's like a ton of good reasons beyond just me not feeling great about my weight you know, that make this new lifestyle really appealing to me and um, really exciting. It's been fun to cook and I, I like enjoy cooking more than I ever thought I could or would. It's been exciting to see weight come off even though I don't feel like I'm deprived or that I'm like, you know, eating less or just hungry. Like with fasting, I was freaking starving and that's not how you should feel. Not if you're doing it right. I clearly wasn't doing it right. So, but I was always hungry. I was going to bed hungry every night. Now I'm not, you know, if I want to eat after work, I do. Most of the time I'm good. Like most of the time I've eaten enough during the day that I'm not that hungry at night or I'll get a little bit hungry just before we're about to go to bed. And it's like, well then just go to sleep. So like, you know, for the most part, I, I feel satisfied. Um, well, no, not really for the most part. I, I feel satisfied, like point blank period. And that's more than I've felt in years with like just trying to like restrict, restrict, restrict and trying to lose weight. It was just like so frustrating. But I've really found that with this new like plant-based lifestyle, I'm getting to eat so much food and it's delicious and it's not hard. Like, I mean, I do think that part of it, like a big part of it is mental preparedness. Like you have to be ready to make a change no matter what kind of change it is. I think that's a big part is like the mental preparedness, feeling like this is what you wanna do, feeling like this is the direction that you wanna go and then executing your plans. I think it definitely starts like, you know, with, with what we're thinking with, you know, with our objectives and our goals. It's just been a huge game changer for me and I'm so excited. And I wanted to let you guys know about that process and how it's been impacting my life and it's it's, 
I'd love to encourage you guys to watch the videos I've watched and to see if this is something you want to incorporate, if this is something you've been struggling with, if you've been struggling with a lot of mental health things. And I definitely feel like I didn't always feel so anxious or depressed. Like, I mean, I've always been shy and a little anxious, a little awkward, all that kind of stuff, but like not to the extent that I had been feeling for like the last couple of years as like, you know, my weight changed. I definitely, I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying it was all, it was all weight or anything. It definitely wasn't. I had a lot of things going on stress-wise in my life with career, with interpersonal relationships that needed to be remedied. And I think that was a big part too. But I mean, I, I would have no reason to feel sad and I would just feel so down in the dumps. And um, ever since I've been eating this plant-based diet, I haven't felt that way. I felt a lot more, um, a lot more content, a lot happier, a lot less scared, um, like anxious, a lot less depressed, a lot more hopeful. And um, it's really been nice. Like I've really been super happy. Oh, and I'm using the Bite Changemaker Foundation in L30. So I don't know, it's just, I feel like I have like a new lease on life. I'm excited. I, I get excited sharing stuff with Doug too. I made this delicious oatmeal the other day and um, it's like the regular like rolled oats. I made it with coconut milk and maple syrup, like pure maple syrup and a little bit of brown sugar, a little bit of brown sugar. Um, which I don't normally use. I'm not sure if brown sugar is vegan or not, but uh, I usually use like maple syrup because that is vegan, the pure stuff. So, um, but I did sneak a little bit of brown sugar in. I cut up a whole, like a big, it was like a, called a honey apple. It was like this gigantic apple. I cut that up into little cubes and tossed that in. I tossed in walnuts. I tossed in flea, flea chia and flax seeds to add more protein. Um, and it was freaking delicious with like the apples and walnuts and maple syrup and brown sugar. And um, it's just like hearty and delicious. And I really, really enjoyed it. Um, another one, like I'll just kind of like look at what I have on hand. Like I'll grab this stuff from Imperfect Food that looks scrumptious or stuff that looks really good at um, Giant, which is where I usually shop. It's our local grocery store. And um, you know, that's typically what I'll stick with. And then like I made, um, I found some cauliflower spaghetti and I made that with like, I diced up like eggplant and I had some like, just like tomato and basil marinara type sauce in the fridge. I was like, oh, I'll throw some of that. And I had like a little, oh, and then um, I used vegan mozzarella cheese from uh, Daya, but they're like off the block, new recipe, not the old one. I've heard the old one's gross, but the new one was really good. So, um, yeah, it was almost like an eggplant, like a deconstructed eggplant Parmesan, but with just like what I had around the house. So, and I want to talk to you guys a little bit about this concealer. I talked to you guys about this in my shop, my stash, where I said I wasn't sure if I love this or not. I found that I do like it, but I like it a certain way. I'll just do like a dot at a time. So I'll just go like a little bit here and a little bit here. And then you want to blend quickly because this dries really fast. So I'll just work with like this little bit and I'll just spread it as far as I can. And I think it's totally fine. And then I'll go back in with a little bit more like another dot once I've blended this part out. But I'd love to know if any of you guys are vegan or eating a plant-based diet. I know my girl Emma is like a nutrition queen. She's always been telling me for years, like cut out the dairy, cut out the dairy. And I, I like I said, I didn't think I could. I thought that was, I mean, it's still like my favorite food group, but like having like the vegan alternatives when I need them, I, like I said, I try to eat a lot of vegetables and fruits. I have been juicing. I bought a juicer from Amazon. Um, I love like carrots and tangerines together. They're pretty good. I did one the other day that was carrots, tangerines, tomatoes, beets, and lemon juice and a little bit of mint. And that was really good. Well, I guess really good is an overstatement. The ta tangerine and carrot, I think is pretty good. That one was like definitely drinkable though. Like I didn't mind it. I finished the whole thing. So I've definitely been enjoy enjoying juicing as just like a supplement to try to get more nutrients. I love that it doesn't feel restrictive. I love that I'm not like counting calories or worried about that kind of stuff. Um, just cause like for me, 
having a past of like a bit of disordered eating and body dysmorphia, which I definitely still deal with. Um, not having to restrict and just being able to eat like till I feel satisfied is a game changer for me. I really was starting to feel like the only way I could ever lose this weight was just to like, you know, go back to starving myself, which is a horrible thing to do, but something I've dealt with in the past. And I didn't want to go that direction. I just, it doesn't, it's not sustainable. It's not healthy. It's not, it's not good for you at any stretch of the imagination. But for someone like me, that's a perfectionist sometimes um, to a fault and um, you know, someone that's very goal driven and looking for results. It's just, I definitely found myself having disordered eating issues and I didn't want to go down that road again and to have something that I don't feel like I have to be restricted. I can just enjoy the food I have and eat when I'm hungry. Um, it's just, it's been huge for me and it's made me really happy. So I'm thrilled about this new diet. And um, it's not really a diet, it's a lifestyle clearly. Um, but, you know, and I don't know if I'll do this forever. I kind of hope that I will. I, I really have enjoyed it so far, but it's still like an experiment to me. I still wanna kind of see, um, like you really should obviously consult with your doctor before changing things with your diet. But because I'm a relatively healthy person, I felt like you know, like in my own non-medical educated opinion, I was like, I think I just want to try this and see if I don't feel well, obviously I'll stop. But, um, also this, this is the Tarte bronzer. Look how tiny that mirror is. It's like the littlest mirror ever. Why? I don't know why they did that. It was kind of stupid, but whatever. I'm not using that mirror anyway. Uh, I just wanted to point that out as like a, not a thing I'm not crazy about with this little guy, but I love the product. I think it's really nice. So basically like, I don't know, I would, I wanna encourage you guys to like check out these films and check out these different channels because it has really been such a huge game changer for me. And I really like the way that I feel. I, I'm still, I think, getting used to it stomach wise. Like I've definitely had some days where I didn't feel totally, <laughs> totally the greatest. I was like, oh my gosh, why is this taking so long for me to adjust to it? But I did hear it can take around you know, four weeks or so. So maybe I'll be on the other side of it soon. But even with the little tummy troubles I have sometimes just trying to get adjusted to all this, I think in the long term it's gonna help me with my stomach problems. Um, in general, just from eating a, a better diet, eating stuff that's easier to digest than a lot of the processed stuff I had personally been eating before. So I'm just really excited about this. I'm excited about the potential and I'm excited that I'm eating more nutritiously and I'm excited that I'm not restricting myself as much. And I just think it's been like overall such a positive and good experience that I just like really wanted to share it with you guys. And I'm not saying it's the perfect solution for everyone. Um, you know, obviously talk to your doctor if this is something you wanna try. I'm in no ween, no weans. I'm by no means a nutritionist, I'm not qualified to give advice on any of this stuff. I'm just talking to you guys about the changes I've been making and the experience I've had so far as a result of making those changes. So I would encourage you to try it if you think you might like it, if you're not a real big meat eater like me. Um, I think it can be really good. I can Vegetables can be really delicious and especially with the ways that these amazing vegan chefs on YouTube prepare food. like. Those fried cauliflower things, I swear I was eating fried chicken. Like it was so good. The seasoning profile she had with it was so, so delicious. I was a huge fan. Grab my butter bronzer in the shade bronzer and this little Real Techniques brush. The silk is turning out better than I thought. I was a little scared at the beginning thinking that this was gonna be a total train wreck, but I don't mind it, it's, it's pretty. And then I think I might, I have a couple things I might wanna do today. Part of me wants to go to the gym, which I know obviously doing my makeup before going to the gym is not smart because you can clog your pores. I probably won't go to the gym anyway. More likely that I'll probably maybe start my book club book. I don't even remember what it's called, but it's sitting on a pile of books I need to read. So definitely want to maybe do that. Maybe take a walk today or something. It's not too late yet. I think it's still like a little afternoon, which is nice. Um, yesterday I was not feeling well at all. I was gonna film yesterday and 
oh my gosh. I woke up not feeling the greatest. Um, for highlight, let's grab our Bloom palette. I think I want to go in with this shade. I think that would be a pretty highlight. I still have to do my lower lash line. I'm deciding what I want to do with that. Let's pop a little bit of this highlighter on. I've really been liking using a fan brush for highlight because I feel like I'm not the greatest, um, well, clearly far from it, with <laughs> highlighter application. I'm always like, I feel like it always gets like too stripey on me. So I feel like with the fan brush, it's like helping me to go in a little bit more light handed, I hope. And it's helping me to have like a better control with these products. Say I want to grab this like glowy orange blush and we'll just pop a little just like to lift my face just kind of keeping it back here not so much the apples that's beautiful grab a little bit more of the orange blush it's that little orange guy Kind of keeping this further back. A little bit of my nose. I really like how this look is turning out. Super pretty and glowy. And I also like this bite foundation better than I thought I did. Apologies, my camera cut me off. I don't even know where. I mean, I know where, but I don't know what I was saying. I just went back and looked through the footage while I put these lashes on and did my lip liner. My lip liner is the KKW Beauty in the shade Nude 1. And then the lashes are the Ardell Faux Mink in 814. I love this style. I think they look really nice with my eye shape with the kind of shorter inside and that get longer on the outside. I found that that really works well for my eye shape. Now I'm going to go in with the Persona Gloss in the shade Honey. The other thing I wanted to talk about was in the video um fat sick and nearly dead he talked about how his theory came from when like you you know fall down and hurt yourself or whatever like you scratch your knee he said growing up you know i would be doing this and doing that and you know say i got like a you know i messed up my knee i fell and scraped myself he said my body would heal itself like and why couldn't it do that on the inside which also excited me and like i said in no way am i saying that um you know, nutrition is a is a substitution for medicine. Um, you know, I can't make any such claim like that. But I do think he's got a point to what he said. And I think that there is the possibility that we could maybe heal ourselves from the inside with nutrition. So I figure it can't hurt. This, these are the foods I'm supposed to be eating anyway. You know, no matter what, if I'm getting more fruits and vegetables, that's got to be a good thing because I wasn't getting enough. I wasn't getting enough fiber. I wasn't getting enough produce. So I think that these changes have definitely helped and I hope that they will continue to help. And of course the mental health benefits have been my absolute favorite part so far. Just having a little bit less like depression and anxiety to deal with and feeling a little bit more equipped to deal with my day from a mental standpoint has been a huge game changer. So I'm thinking I want to do something a little bit more orange or peach, which I think would be like possibly really pretty with this like bright shade here, this like bright peachy coral shade. All right, so I'm gonna grab this really pretty coral shade and we're gonna use this under the lower lash line. So this idea of like healing from the inside out really has me excited. Um, I hope it's possible. I hope I can experience some of those good results too. I am thrilled about, like I said, the weight loss portion. I'm thrilled that I am eating more and eating better and uh, it's just been a really positive change in my life that I couldn't wait to share with y'all because that's like my favorite thing to do is if I find something I really love, whether it be makeup or, you know, shampoo or, you know, a household item or whatever, if I learn something that has been helping me, I want to share it with y'all in the event it might help you too. So I definitely hope if any of y'all are interested, um, you know, that, that, the information I'll be providing below in the description box will be helpful as well. And um, 
you know, if you're dealing with some of the same things I was dealing with, I hope that it can be helpful for you um, to maybe offset some of those feelings if you've been feeling kind of down and low energy. I do hope that if that's what you're dealing with as well, if you're dealing with sadness, over being feeling overwhelmed, feeling low energy, lethargic, depressed, anxious, whatever, I hope that maybe switching to a plant-based diet can be as effective for you as it's been for me. It's really been such a huge game changer. I'm gonna quick set my face with my Facial Prime and Setting Mist from Giovanni. So TJ Maxx setting spray. So this is our look. I like the way it turned out. I'm very surprised. I was thinking I was on a bad path for a little bit. With those first two shades, you can probably just skip them all together and go right in with the dark green if you want to. But I felt confident going with those neutral shades first to kind of get an eye shape I wanted to try. And then I kind of just let it go from there. So pull you guys out and we will finish off this look. So this is my final look using the products that we pulled from my shop, my stash. I actually really like it. I look a little, a little crazy with this hair, but I'm just gonna have to work itself out today. <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please let me know what other topics you guys would like me to discuss. I know I also got some recommendations for a Q and A, but I'm not sure what things you guys would wanna know about me. So definitely feel free to leave some questions down in the comments if you would like, and I will work on a Q and A. I also was kind of looking online for some like generic questions, but then I thought it might be good to kind of mix in some ones that you guys are really curious about. So definitely feel free to leave some questions down in the comments down below or topics you would like me to discuss in the next Get Ready With Me. I would love to do that for you. And I had a lot of fun using these products today and it was fun to get creative with you guys and do a full face of makeup from the Shop My Stash items that we pulled. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope that I can encourage you to check out some of the resources I'm gonna leave in the description box below. I love you all so much. Thank you so much for being here with me today. And until the next video.